Welcome to the, I keep saying scale and exit. That was the name of my podcast. I've changed it. It's straight fire. So welcome to the straight fire show. I am excited. I have my new friend on Steven. You're in uh, Hungary, right? Indeed. I'm, in, I'm right outside of Budapest in a small village, actually. Dude, that's awesome. And uh, yeah. you've been there for a while, seven years. You found your wife out there. I did. I, I came here for a business turnaround and yeah. I walked in, I walked in and the first person I saw was that, was that amazing woman and, and I decided, that? decided to marry her and I did. Uh, and I, that's what I did. That's awesome. Hey, so let me give an intro really fast. So Steven is a decorated United States army combat veteran, which I want to get into. He's a speaker, author, business consultant, helps entrepreneurs, business operators dramatically improve their businesses, quality of life through consistency and uh, application of honesty, integrity, and transparency, AKA the hitman. Boom. I love that dude, right? So the hitman is honesty, integrity, and transparency. That's right, that's right. And I There's watched- There's a whole uh, program behind that. There's a whole program behind that, yep, indeed. I, dude, I love that. And I watched uh, some of your videos before we got on. Really good stuff, man. You know, I, you. I, 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 uh, we're in this age right now of everybody, you know, online is a fucking guru, right? Yeah. And everybody, you know, is selling something or doing something. And I think people get lost. And I talked about this topic uh, yesterday. People are gravitating towards who they think they should be. Whether right. that's, oh, I should, I should behave like Gary Vee or like Grant Cardone or like Ed Milet or whoever. And I heard in one of your videos, you're like, listen, everything I do is, is authentic and it comes from here, right? And, and you know, I love, I love that you're being true to who you are. Um, and, you know, so, so talk about that because... I mean, you, you agree that that's, that's important. I mean, if you want to be super successful, you have to be authentic. Oh, yeah, but no one wants a copy. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's like it puzzles me. Okay, if, if you want to be a coach or a client or anything, you have to learn. Of course, you have to learn. Mm -hmm. And so you go to college or you take courses or like you go to the John Maxwell Institute and become a coach or something. But my problem comes with when, it, when someone says, hey, I'm a John Maxwell coach. Okay, what, what, who are you? You know, I, right. I, if I wanted John Maxwell, I'd hire John Maxwell. You know, it's like, I don't get it. It, it just yeah. doesn't make sense to me. And yeah. a lot of people don't see past that. They think, okay, there's a program. I take it. I'm qualified. Well, yeah. that's not a qualification as far as life goes. That's mm -hmm. a qualification you can check a box and say, for those people who actually care about that, you know, look, I have my MBA and all that stuff that you're supposed to have because mm -hmm. I, I fell into that trap before. But nothing, nothing, and I mean nothing, overcomes being authentic. You know, when you're authentic, and this is part of HIT, honesty, integrity, transparency, honesty with yourself and why you do what you do. What's your, who's your identity? What do you, what's your purpose? That's right. the honesty part. And then the, the, uh, the transparency is part is how you communicate that, being honest yeah. about why you are who you are. Yeah. And the byproduct of honesty and, and transparency is integrity. And right. every healthy relationship on the planet is based on integrity. And that, when, that makes you authentic. And when you're authentic, you can dictate, as you know, your own market value. Amen. Because no one's like you, yeah. right? Nobody. And so, so yeah, I, you know, I find it a shame, you know, that, and that's why I'm loving talking to you because you've done the dirty work, mm. right? You and I, we're, we're online now for about a year and a half, right? We're, we, yeah. we both started about the first time. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. Had, we had real businesses yeah. and we worked with real people uh, for 20 plus years, right? Yeah, totally. And so it's awesome to get online with you and actually talk about like real business. Yeah. And man. I got to tell you, I got to tell you though that, you know, because of the one product that, that we sold online, Laybag, I was invited to all these e-commerce stages, mm -hmm. right? So speaking on stage, and my first thing was like, okay, all you drop shippers out there making 100000 a month, you don't have a business. Okay, all you coaches out there, you know what I mean? It's like, you don't have a business. You don't have a business. You have nothing. You have cash flow, period. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that put out some, some waves, I got to tell you, but it also made me someone that people went to say, okay, show me how. Yeah, no, it's great. So talk to me about, um, so you uh, we're a combat veteran. Thank you right. for your service. Um, you. I'm a big supporter of, of the military. H how much of that training and that experience and that discipline made you who you are today? Wow. You know, it, I've, I've, I stopped who I was when I was 19, when I joined the army. Mm -hmm. So I hated myself. I, I was, um, you know, I was 240, 6'4 in high school. Mm -hmm. And someone like that's a star football player, except for me. Yeah. <laughs> I was a doofus, man. I was tripping over my own feet. I couldn't do anything. So, 
<laughs> Baby Dewey. You know, I don't know if you remember who that was, but yeah, 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 I do. And, uh, yeah, that was me. And uh, no self self belief, nothing. So I, I knew I had to get out of there to to become who who I thought I could be. Mm-hmm. And so I joined the military. And as soon as that razor touched my head, they started shaving my head in boot camp. I said, "This is my new me." Mm. And then I I just I you know I started experiencing life uh, as it could be with someone who actually believed in themselves. Mm. And to my surprise, uh, things were much easier than I was told they were yeah. and much easier than I'm being shown that they were. Right. Uh, and it all it came down to me, right? Mm. So the military brought structure into my life. It brought, um, you know, sort of, let's say, go through the wall to make it happen no matter what. Yeah. Like there's nothing's impossible. There's always a way. And these are all nice cliche words that everybody uses. And you see the memes every day on Facebook or wherever you look. Right. Uh, but but the, most people who... Who, who, I don't want to say most, but a lot of people who post these things, they post them to make themselves feel good, but they don't really think about what it means. Right. And for me, when I have a moment, which is rare, where I think, oh man, this is going to be tough. I think back to boot camp when I was mm. standing at that wall where I had to climb over the wall in the obstacle course and I couldn't do it. There was no rope. I, I just couldn't do it. So the drill sergeant threw me down in the mud, put his boot in the back of my neck and started just cussing me out and something snapped in me. I grabbed his foot, pushed it away, jumped up, and I literally leaped over that wall without even using my hands. I don't even know how I did it. And then suddenly I landed on the other side. It was like angels show. I was like, oh yeah. my God, I can do this? Like yeah. anything, I can do anything. So that right there, if there's anything I learned in the military, it was that nothing is impossible and it all depends on you. Yeah, and you know, you, I'm sure you know, being a decorated combat veteran, you experienced a, a lot of stuff and I don't want to get into that and talk about that, but it's giving you probably an amplified appreciation of, of life, right? It, it, well, it has. And I have to say that the, the, you know, the bad things more than the good things actually yeah. are my real power. Um, totally. My real power is staying in, in, in the vulnerable space. Like at the beginning of our talk, you said, is there any questions I shouldn't ask? I said, no, ask the questions you don't think you should ask. Right. That's because I, I know that. Vul- <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> I know that vulnerability is my strength. I just right. wrote an article for entrepreneur.com. And it was exactly about how to use vulnerability as your strength. Because I'll go into a boardroom where you have McKinsey consultants and all these big, you know, these what they call in German Schlipsträger, also tie wearers, right? Um, and I'll just sit there and listen to them. And they have their, their PowerPoints and their presentations and all that kind of stuff. And I'm just sitting there in my, let's say, vulnerability and say, this is what I can offer. This is how it's going to work. And this is the bridge to get there. Yeah. Uh, and I typically always win because of that. Because I'm not worried about what they're doing. I'm not yeah. worried about what they're going to say that's going to trump me. Not at all. So I mm. stay in my space of vulnerability. Boom. And I win every time. So I, you know, I, I credit that to the war. I mean, I have to yeah. say I lost a friend. I lost my buddy right in my arms. Mm. Um, Sergeant Young M. Dillon, um, you know, rest in peace. And, you know, I, I, the hardest part was the children that we ran into over there that were coming out of Basra. Basra was burning uh, not from us, but from the Shiites uh, yeah. that who did an uprising and then the Sunnis, Saddam wow. Hussein, took them out. They came to us for help. We, we could only help them and send them back into the desert. So there's many lessons learned there about humility, about complaining, about mm-hmm. never having to think that, uh, that I'm hurting or missing something. Because I had a little girl come to me. She was burnt from head to toe, mm. wearing, wearing a pink dress in the middle of the desert. The pink dress was to cover the clothes that were burned on her skin. And when she came out of the dispensary where I sent her in to get or to the track where she got fixed up and bandaged, she came out to me, everything burned, lost everything. I mean, who knows, you know, if she could even go back. And I pulled out a little butterscotch candy from my grenade pocket because my aunt would send it to me and I gave it to her and she smiled. Mm. You know, and I said, I said, man, I never have the right to, to complain ever again. Oh, yeah. My life will never be. What a situation. moment. Yeah, it was, and it was, and, it, and and the funny thing about it is you go through these moments in life, right? And most people remember, but I know these moments because they were, it was so present in my life. Like I, I woke up, it was like, in that second, it was like, this is history right here. This is changing me right now. Like yeah. I was actually aware of that moment and I don't know where it comes from. Right. But, but I actually thought I'm going to remember this point. I'm going to remember this forever. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I think those moments, right? Although I, I, I didn't serve, but. I, you know, I played football. I've always been a team, you know, person. I understand what it takes to the discipline to work out, you know, what it takes to be a part of a team, um, to, to, to fail, to win. Um, so there, there's some similarities. I mean, obviously it's radically different, right? What you did. Well, it's all relative. It's all relative. You can't experience yeah. what you, you can't know what you can't experience. And 
your level, like, so, like I'll give you a perfect example. I was uh, chosen to march in the victory parades after Desert Storm. So I got to go to New York City and Washington, D.C. and carry the, 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 the uh, Calvary colors down Fifth Avenue. It was amazing. And a Vietnam vet was there. Oh, you don't know shit. You know, you were only there for six months and blah, you know, that kind of stuff. And, and I, I said, first of all, come march with us. Right? So yeah. grab them in. <laughs> and, and then I said, look, man, that was my Vietnam. I can't yeah. even imagine it oh, being yeah. worse. And I don't want to imagine it yeah. being worse. You know what I'm right. saying? So. So uh, kudos to you. I get it. You know, I'm mean, so you, 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 you've had trauma. I, I played football. I had m massive trauma playing football because I sucked. But, <laughs> but, 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 but what you learned in that, I mean, I think what people, so you go back to the McKinsey, right? That when you, those guys that typically come in the room, there's a lack of sense of, of urgency or, or, or discipline. And, you know, I think guys like us that are scrappy or entrepreneur, yep. we come in and identify and say, listen, it's not that fucking hard. Here's yeah. the problem. Here's how we're going to fix it. Let's Boom. take action. You yeah. know? And, and a lot of people just don't, don't do that. And, I, and well, I think a lot of that comes from discipline, experience, failing, all of those things. I think it also comes from the point that um, we know how to win. Yeah. Amen. You know, we know how to win. We've been there. You know, we've been in those in the trenches. I mean, you, you know, I've, I looked at your background, too. You, you've done some massive exits, my, my friend. Yeah. Um, put me to shame here. Uh, <laughs> it's all relative, right? <laughs> <laughs> Touche, my friend. Touche. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So I, I think we know, we, uh, we know how to win. And because we know how to win, you said it, it's easy. Yeah. Right? It's literally easy. You have a problem. If they have, you find out their number one problem, you freaking solve it. Yeah. It's not about models and, oh, look at the BCG grid and we have to do a yeah. force, five forces and a SWOT analysis and that kind of stuff, you know, and which is nice. And it sounds like very intelligent, uh, but wh where are the results? Yeah. Where are the results? And uh, typically a consultant from one of those big companies, they're only there to consult you, to tell you to do something that you don't want to do yourself anyway. You know what I'm saying? And then they'll give you a big report and say, go do it. And you won't do it. Yeah. Most people don't, don't implement it anyway. Well, and they don't have the resources or the time or the right. effort. I mean, what, right. As you look at um, corporate America, right? Yeah. And, and to me, that can be, you know, small to big business. So let's say it's a business of, you know, as small as 5 million in revenue up to 500 million in revenue. Right. Plus, right. What do you see is the biggest issue right now? Well, <laughs> My brother, my twin brother, yeah, Scott yeah. Kuhn. Yeah. yeah, Scott. He, he uh, four as well. Yes. So, so identical twin. Yes, identical twins. He's he's yeah. about fifty pounds heavier though. Okay. So he's like he's a big dude. He's a big dude. I'm I'm a little sort of skinny now. Um, he. Uh, I'm in Europe. It's a different. It's a different model. Yeah. It is. yeah it is. <laughs> so he's a uh, he's um, the head of wealth management at Wells Fargo East Coast or something. He's like one of the big top twenty guys in the company or something as far as yeah. positions go. And they have a book that comes out every quarter, a rule book like this. Mm. He can't even write an email with a person who's supposed to be in CC if they put him in. You know, it's, it's ridiculous. It's yeah. over control. It's stifling create, create creativity. It's right. stifling the ideas of the leaders. And it's making leaders complacent because yeah. they're scared to act. Mm. Much like in society, much like in society right now, people are scared mm -hmm. to speak up, to act, to make a decision because yeah. they have to check first. Am I going to get in trouble? Am I going to get fired? This kind of stuff. And, you know, there's situations out there where companies could be doing much better if they let go of the reins just a little bit and actually delegated like you're supposed to do in leadership. I always say, you know, it's funny, a quick story. I was, I was being interviewed for Apple, right? And when I was in Switzerland, I was living in Switzerland, running a, um, a big chain of uh, health clubs. And, um, Apple approached me, hey, would you like to work for us? Because we're recruiting people from health clubs because we realized their customer service attitudes, their levels are much higher than any other industry, which I think is fabulous mm -hmm. that uh, Apple actually realized that. So I went to the 12 interviews, right? 12 interviews. <laughs> and, yeah, it was, they were going to hire me to be a cluster manager, whatever that is, to run three countries, uh, the, the German-speaking countries because I speak German. And uh, I'm sitting there with the director of Europe. I think that's what we, we was. And he said, well, how do you – I'm looking at your resume. How do you do – there's no way – that you can do all those things that you do on your resume. Mm. There's no way. He said, how can you run four companies at the same time and manage this company as a, as a consultant? And I said, um, delegate the task, never the responsibility. Mm. I don't do the work. Yeah. I organize and delegate the task and, and provide leadership. And he, he said, holy shit, write that down. And <laughs> it was hanging, hanging in the office in Apple. I didn't take the job, but it was hanging in the office in, in, in Apple a, a, few, a few weeks later. So 
delegation yeah. is yeah. the truth behind leadership. Yeah, I mean, how, how often, um, and, I, and, and we're aligned, I talk about this all, all the time, people don't empower their people, right? If you want to be successful, fucking empower people, right? <laughs> go, go let them fail, like, go, or go let them win, but, you know, you can't micromanage. There's a stat, and you'll appreciate the stat, you may know the stat, 67% of the, of the U.S., I don't know if this is a, applicable for, you know, Europe, of the U.S. are unhappy and un, uh, unengaged or not engaged right. within their company. Of course. So, so think about that. I mean, so, and, and, and this becomes, you know, that, that stat's probably more relevant the bigger the company, but, you know, you have 5,000 employees, 67% yeah. are unhappy and not engaged and nobody's fucking talking about the revenue impact of that, Boom. right? And, and, and how to fix that and how do you empower people and how do you build culture and how do you motivate them to win, right? Yeah. Get back to your brother's example, you know, they're unhappy because you're fucking making them like blind carbon copy and email and then they're getting their hands scolded like a little kid if yep. they follow these bullshit rules, right? And, and then even, you don't even have to do anything. Someone just doesn't have to like you. Yeah. And they say, he looked at me weird. Or it's so, that's how harsh corporate America is right now because yeah. of all the social Im Im implications that are going on right now. And, um, and I told him, I said, you need to break out. And he's like, Shh, don't, don't tell anybody. <laughs> he's like, don't, don't be telling, don't, don't, don't be saying that. He, he loves his job. He's, and, and the thing about it, he's really good at it. Yeah, like he's, no, I'm sure. he's on the president's list every single year. He's, he's the number one or number two in, in all of America and Wells Fargo every freaking year. I mean, the guy's amazing. Um, but he's not free in my yeah. opinion. Right. Yeah, so let's talk about that. So right now, you're, you're on kind of this new journey where you're doing more on, online, this personal brand. And, uh, you know, I've seen you've got an amazing course. I looked at it online, tons of reviews. Seems like it's doing really uh, well. I don't know if you want to call it a course or it's a program. Talk, talk program. A well, I have both, that. but yeah, I have both. Well, the yeah. first course we did, I, I partnered with a millennial. Um, okay. He's a Green Beret Special Forces veteran. Oh, cool. um, he's an incredible guy. I, I do a retreat every year in Peru and we work with a sacred medicine, plant medicine and the Kushi, uh, um, the, um, the Kesh Keshua tribe, who's the last 800 descendants of the Incans. And we work with them. I want to go to this. This sounds amazing. We just got back last week. Okay, <laughs> so we'll go again. I'll let you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what we do is we create certainty through purpose mm. and we use the plant medicine to get us there quicker. Got so it. the plant medicine dissolves all blockages, believe me. Yeah. And you it's go straight like to ayahuasca, the ayahuasca, is it? It is ayahuasca. It ayahuasca. Is ayahuasca. Okay. <laughs> and San Pedro. And San yeah. Pedro. Ayahuasca is, is the feminine, the airy, yeah. and the San Pedro is the grounding source. So that's the father. They call it the grandfather. Okay, so I definitely want to go now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we don't use it to we don't use it to get high. We don't do that. It's all about certainty in life and in business. Yeah. And so Lane came last year. My, my, my partner and we hit it off immediately and we, we set up a, a, you know, a, let's say a collaborative sort of purpose together. Yeah. And since we've been, it's been 10 months, 11 months now since we got back and we just went to the second retreat with him this year. And uh, we've already got three companies. The first course we did was the last goal setting course you'll ever need. Um, and that's literally the last goal setting course you'll ever need. That's just a one-off six, uh, six week program. But the real impact is the immediate impact revenue program. It's an mm -hmm. online, uh, live, uh, Facebook group where we have four classes every week. And one class is him, high performance mindset. Second day on Wednesdays is me with a hot seat, which is what I'm really good at because I've been doing it for 20 years. Uh, on the, on the, on Thursdays, and this is good for you. I'd love to have you in is we have, business professionals come in and teach what they know, mm. right? For instance, I got, you know, you probably know Tim Story and um, 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 Evan Carmichael and Roland Fraser. They've all agreed to come in and teach for free in the class to the students, cool. right? And then on Fridays, we have Business and Body Mindset uh, with um, Ollie Jordan Matthews from the UK, who's a, he's like an executive uh, fitness coach for busy executives online. And he's just a fantastic. I actually flew him out here a couple of weeks ago to get me back in shape before I went to Peru. <laughs> I, awesome. wanted to climb Machu, I wanted to climb Machu Picchu instead of a wall, instead of take the bus. Yeah. Did you do it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did it. I did it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And um, I lost 22 pounds in 10 days while I was there. But yeah, oh, it was, wow. it was incredible. Yeah. 
So um, I forget what we were talking about, but anyway, oh, Lane. Yeah, so um, Lane and I uh, set up this program and we did a free training. It's called mm-hmm. stephenclass.com. So it's Stephen with a V, class, double S, dot com. And what that does is it gives you literally a two and a half hour core of free training that tells you exactly in the webinar training um, exactly how to scale your business within the next 30 days and grow your revenue. Like it's free. You don't have to buy anything. You just go inside, just put yeah. your email in, get the access and watch it. And th- the reason I do that is because I know, and I know you know this, <laughs> I, can, I can sit here and say, I have a book, right? Right here that will show you how to make a, a million dollars. I'm gonna give it to you for free. Mm-hmm. I'll give it to 100 people. You know, some people say 20% take action. That's bullshit. 20% will take the book, yeah. right? But yeah. about six percent will even take action, and two Get will that. finish. Yeah. Exactly, and then two will finish. Right, actually make a million bucks. Yeah. So that's why I'm not worried about. Oh, you can't give your stuff away. I'm giving it away. I want yeah. people to see that they don't have to go out and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on courses of some person who has no real experience. And that's why I value what you're doing. Right? You know, first of all, let's get this straight. Anybody with the name Judge? Are you kidding me? You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, boom! I'm coming. You know, I have a buddy in Texas, his last name is Justice. I was like, Jesus, man, you know, he's, he's <laughs> I'm Judge Texas Justice. Too, by the way. What's that? I'm in Texas too, by the way. Oh, yeah, okay, I know, I saw that. The Texas is huge for a veteran community too, by the way. Yeah. Um, I have a group of uh, veteran entrepreneurs on Facebook. They're called Vetpreneurs. Oh, cool. Um, 13,000 of us now. Uh, and the wow. largest majority by far is from Texas, so. Which, yeah. by the way, I'd like to invite you in there to give a, um, a free class as well. And how that works is this. I invite yeah, people you know, in. Hey, I'm in. Let me know. Okay. Anytime you give free classes, I'm, I'm just asking for you to give free advice, but then you can sell your products. So it doesn't matter. So that's why, you know, I had Credit Carl in there. You know, he, you know, sort of some, some people signed up for his uh, credit uh, repair or whatever it was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's it's a it's a great thing to do. I like I like to give back. This on, let's go back to the online thing that you were talking about. I didn't know what the hell I was doing, right? So I went to Peru, and I literally did my entire trip on creating certainty and purpose through a new online business. Mm-hmm. And I said I need to start an online business. This is in August. I, I need this August two thousand seventeen. I guess it was. I need to start a new business. It's going to be online. What's it going to be? How do I do it? What do I need to do? That was my questions to the mother. They call it ayahuasca the mother. And then the father, San Pedro, helped me sort of solidify. And I said I needed to make 100 grand to prove that it works in the shortest amount of time. And I wanted to buy a new house. So yeah. uh, three months, it was all done. In three oh. months. In three months. With no ads, no marketing, no experience. I literally, all I did was Facebook Live. That's all I did. Yeah, it's great, man. And I made my first hundred grand in three months just from Facebook Lives. People hiring me to do their consulting, hiring me to turn their business around, hiring me to fix their fix their sort of business relationships with collaboration partners. It's gotten to the point now where um, I have equity in like fifteen companies That's because cool. I what I like most people can't afford what you would typically pay for a consultant. Right. So I say, okay, let's pay let's, let's pay half and, and give me three percent, give me five percent, yeah. give me two percent, and they're like, sure, great, let's do it. Yeah. And what that does. Yeah is it makes them realize that I got skin in the game now. Yeah. Like I'm going to be damned if, I, if I'm going to let you fail. No way. Yeah. We're going to make this happen because I get 3%. So. Yeah. Well, and so. I think the word commitment is, is key, right? I mean, most entrepreneurs, they don't want to commit. Mm-hmm. What I mean by commit, I always talk about burning the ships, right? And by giving up some of their company, right, or you taking some of it, that's a fucking commitment. I mean, that's a real thing, right? And yeah. so that's motivating both parties because there's commitment there. And yep. you know, when I when I coach or when I speak or when I come in to consult, one of the biggest problems I see is it's lack of commitment. Right? Because well, when you're committed, you either win or you lose. There's nothing in between. I think a big, a big, a big problem. This wasn't always a problem that I that, that I saw. I see it now because there's an um, overabundance of offers. Yeah. People are like, well, if I, what about if I, I tried with this guy before and didn't work, eh, maybe I'll do two smaller guys instead of one big guy, whatever, you know? So they're always trying to find a way to not spend that money. Right. And I, so I can do it myself. I just need a little bit of guidance. Yeah. 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 Um, that kind of thing. And also the commitment that I see is of course, especially first, first time business owners. Mm-hmm. And it happened to me. Right. So I had I opened my first bar in Berlin, Germany at cocktail bar. 
And after two, well, three months after opening, I had an offer from an, a cocktail um, training agency or training company. They wanted to buy my bar for 300,000 D marks back in the day. I had only put 200,000 in. So it was a hundred, hundred grand profit in yeah. three months. I was like, if you want 300 now, it'll be worth even more next year. <laughs> I, I had that bar and three and two more and a club for 10 years. And I, and I walked out with 50 K, you know, it was like, it was, <laughs> it was like, you know, experience my friend but yes yeah. um so yeah i get it and 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 you know it's because i was like no it's my business it's my baby i can't you know blah 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 blah, blah. so when you have people out there and they say look steve can you help me out because you know i place product at costco and walmart and that kind of stuff distributors and online all kinds of stuff and i also find funding for projects right. and i find projects for funding we're doing I'm, I'm setting up an ipo right now for a company i mean there's all kinds of stuff that i'm doing and everyone says how can you do so much how can you not concentrate on one thing that is one thing it is, yeah. It's yeah. facilitating success in business, my friend. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Right? You know, I, I love talking to you because you're like, you like understand everything I say. I don't have to explain it. Right. You know? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a tough world for entrepreneurs out there because there's so, too many offers. Yeah. I, I just say this. Look at the background of the person. What have they actually done in life? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can Google the hell out of me. You'll find most of it in German probably. But, right. you, know, <laughs> you know, you find all kinds. Of, I mean, I, I, I worked with Mick Jagger, not as a consultant, but as yeah, a bodyguard. Yeah, let's yeah. talk about that. You you you've had experience with some pretty cool celebrities. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So like, what what what? Let's do well, Mick Jagger or, or who else did I saw? Who else was on there that was Andrea Andrea Bocelli? Yeah, um, Olivia Newton John. Yeah, and so you know, this is a, this is when we talk about leadership. I always say so we, leadership is nothing without self leadership. If you don't lead yourself, you're not you're not gonna be a great leader. So, we, self leadership for me means you know hit honesty, integrity, transparency with everything that you do to yourself first. Because that, that then spills over to the outside world. And I realized a long time ago that creating space without expectations for people to step into mm. can be not only to your advantage, but to their advantage. So little did I know at the time, I created space for Mick Jagger to walk in and he accepted my offer as his bodyguard in his hotel lobby, wow. right? Because I heard on the radio that his bodyguard stayed in London and he was going to be in Berlin for three weeks. Mm -hmm. And so I went to the hotel. And I said, hey, I'm your new bodyguard. He goes, what? Who, huh? Who sent you? I said, I sent me. <laughs> yeah. And the next thing you know, I'm his bodyguard. 400 bucks a day. <laughs> there I was. You know, and, and it was just something I wanted to do, right? Yeah. And I, I, year after year, I was doing this. And I was creating space for people to come in and feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And that's, that goes back to that vulnerability. I show up fully and wholly, no expectations, no preconceived notions, and no lines sort of practiced, right? Mm -hmm. So you step into my space. I step into your space. And we create that thing that everyone overuses now called a mastermind, right? Yeah. So you and I get together, no expectations. The third entity forms itself, that mastermind, and we come up with solutions and ideas that none of us alone would ever come up with. Yeah. You know? And so that's, that's how I got all these things. Andrea Bocelli, I met one of his guitarists in a barbershop in Dusseldorf. Mm. And the guy said, God, you're, you're freaking cool. I love how you talk. Could you help manage <laughs> our, our team, right? Yeah. Like, could you help manage us? And I was like, I've never done it, but sure, I'm sure I could do it really well. So I said, I'll oh, organize a meeting with Andrea. And he did. So I flew to London with my wife, looked at the, watched the concert, went backstage. Hey, Andrea, how you doing? High five. And um, let's meet tomorrow at the hotel. That's awesome. He's like, what for? I said, you're going to love it. Just let's meet tomorrow. So he didn't show up, but his wife did actually, who runs the whole business and uh, her assistant, um, um, Alicia. And I, and, and I asked for a retainer which you don't get in the music industry, right? Mm -hmm. You just don't get it. You get percentages as a manager, as, a, as someone like that. So I got percentages and a retainer. After they laughed at me for five minutes, <laughs> I walked away with the retainer and everything else. Why? Because I, I created a space of no pressure, no expectations, no wants, no wishes. This is, this is who I am and this is what I can do. And that, my friend, that is where the magic lies. Yeah. That, 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 is, that is just, it's more powerful than anything I've ever experienced. And I'm just now solidifying it with Lane because I call Lane the coon whisperer yeah. because I talk a lot, as you've probably noticed, um, and he sort of deciphers it and puts it in structure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's good. Well, I think all real entrepreneurs um, are that way, right? I mean, we're, you know, it, you know, somewhat squirrel, right? It's, you know, here and there, and then it's, it's just constantly ideas. And yep. the really good entrepreneurs have figured out a way to continue to juggle those 46 balls, but with focus and control, right? I mean, I think that's part of it. So what did you exactly do for Bucelli? Bucelli, I, um, the, he has a opening 
guitar solo, mm-hmm. a good guitar duo, the classic guitarists called um, Charisma. Mm-hmm. And I helped them create um, a brand, so to say. So I got them on like British TV and I oh, went. Very cool. And then I went in Andrea's name to talk to all the record labels, all the CEOs. And it was funny. I'll never forget my first call with Sony, right? So I called the CEO of Sony Classic. And I said, hello, this is Stephen Cohen. I just said who I was and what I wanted to meet with her. And she said, uh, you don't come from this industry, do you? And I said, I don't. She was, <laughs> and she said, fantastic. When can we meet? Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so think about that for a second. Yeah. Because again, we get to the authenticity, right? Because I was who I was. Yeah. I wasn't trying, trying to be act like you were somebody. a record dude. Hey, what's yeah. up? You know, none of that stuff. Right. So, yeah, yeah. um, and it ended up being my, my strength. And I, I have a friend who manages the, the, the boy, it used to be a boy group. Now it's a men's group called blue. Um, yeah. I don't, they're, they're huge. They do five, like 500 what is it 50 like 50 60 concerts a year yeah it's crazy like almost every week but not in america and uh you know they're huge they make massive amounts of money and i i went through in one week all the ceos of all the record labels in london and he said how the fuck did you do that there's no way i, I can't even do that i said it's simple you just call them and talk to them right it's yeah. simple i mean yeah. i can get their, their their private cell phone numbers that, that's that's a, a trick in itself right uh, but you know get your private cell phone numbers call them up and just literally create that space man yeah but i mean you said you said a big thing too and i've seen a couple of videos and is pick up the phone i mean we, we are <laughs> so especially now in this social you know vortex that we're in you know so many people of it have just forgotten to to fucking pick up the phone you know i mean and it's dangerous it's dangerous yeah. because because people think hey what did you do a lot of work today yeah i wrote 100 emails right <laughs> Would you invoice? Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, I love that. I want to use that. Exactly. Yeah, and, and it's it's scary because even I catch myself sometimes. Okay, I wrote I wrote uh, you know fifty emails, fifteen uh, um, uh, you know messengers, messenger messages, and you know, wait a second, I didn't do anything actually today. You know, yeah. I mean, it's like so I didn't make any product, no no productivity. So I didn't make any appointments. I didn't you know. Right. Yeah, it's scary, man. I mean, even for like the younger generation with the lack of the phone, when you get on with them it's awkward, right? Yeah. Yeah. Human communication is becoming awkward and uh, that's a problem, you know? It is. Talk, it talk is. to me a little bit about, um, and I envy you because I've, I've spent very little time um, overseas, just a little right. bit, and I, I want to. But it seems like you, I mean, you, you live there, you packed up. I mean, how, how is it? And, you know, how do you still do business in the U.S.? Are you constantly right. traveling? Like, what's it like? Well, you know, I, I was over here in the, in the military for eight years before I got out. Yeah. So I got used to it, you know, and I learned German and, you know, that kind of stuff. And when I got out, I realized real quick, well, man, I'm a commodity here. Mm. You know, my attitude, the leadership beliefs that I have yeah. and how I can motivate and, and, and inspire people, very different than, mm. than the European culture. Um, I was too harsh at first because of the military training. People kept calling me captain yeah. and general and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they still do to this day, but it's not because I'm hard. It's because it just carried on, right? Yeah. So, so I had to learn quickly, real leadership isn't pushing, isn't, you know, it's people say lead from the front. Yeah, that's nice. You know, it's, it's actual providership. Sure. So I, I based everything that I do on the six essential human needs. And I know that, that those six essential human needs are the reason for every problem that anybody has. Mm-hmm. So if you know that, leadership's simple. So if someone seeks significance, there's two ways they're going to do it. They're going to do something amazing, and they're going to get praised for it, or they're going to put somebody else down. So when you see someone putting someone down, that's not because they're assholes. It's because they're seeking significance. They feel mm-hmm. insignificant. So you give them a bit of significance, and boom, they're back on level again. Yeah. And so these are the kind of things that I learned over here to actually create change, movement, culture of productivity right? In these, all these corporations, my, my biggest company, I had 3,500 employees mm-hmm. and it was just, it was just incredible to see the impact that I had on the matter of fact, that was a corporation from the UK listed on the London stock market. And over the last 18 years, I've worked for them four times. They just called me last week to come back. I'm like, not doing awesome. it. Okay. Four times is enough, <laughs> you know, four times is enough. And why? Because of that unique ability or the unique skill or whatever it is to believe that those six essential human needs are literally the root cause of almost anything, any, any problem you have in a human being with business or otherwise. That's awesome. And so you've seen that that has translated uh, oh. more effective in, in Europe than probably even here. 
Yes, because in, in America, they say, do it or you're fired. Right. Right. And you can't say that here because there's all the social systems here. They're like, oh, really? Well, I'm going to go sick for six months. You, <laughs> yeah. you got to pay me for six months. You know, yeah. <laughs> they do it. You know, like some people say, hey, I'm going to be sick next Thursday. You're like, what, what? do you mean? <laughs> yeah, they can say that. It's legal. Yeah. They go to a doctor and every doctor is like, how long do you want to be sick? <laughs> like, that's literally what they ask you. You're like, oh, Jesus. You know? So it's hard to be a, 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 you have to be on your A game over here yeah. to actually be productive in, 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 if you're a leader. And what it meant for me was I was able to create relationships from mafia to politician. Mm. And everyone has massive respect for me because I treat everybody with integrity, right? I don't speak down to anybody and I elevate everyone around me. Yeah, so no. my, my, you know, and I've, I've worked in, I've worked and lived in 10 countries. Um, what I didn't tell you is I'm also the co-founder of, of Germany's largest non-political party, uh, non-political, non-party political organization. Um, and it's a very powerful think tank and a pressure group that's now um, on the front edge. It's even, even Breitbart writes about us now. Wow. Um, I had to step back from the public eye because as an American, I'm not allowed to vote. And people are like, why is this American here? Is he CIA? That kind of stuff. So I had to back out. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I was like, with my mouth, CIA? I don't think so. You know? <laughs> so, um, so I've done all that. And the reason I can make all these, all these relationships across all borders, all social structures, all industries is because I'm, I don't try to be anything to anybody. Like you said, just be me, yeah. authentic, mm -hmm. and base everything that I do on honesty, integrity, transparency, and use a providership. Yeah. The, the providership um, and principles with the six essential human needs. Boom. So how often do you get to the U S um, the last two years only to speak? Got it. You know, so last year was like four or five times. I was in the States to speak. Um, do you um, love Europe? I absolutely love Look, man. Yeah. I mean look. the views, I mean, I'm looking at some of your Facebook lives and the pictures yeah. and it's like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, look, I can drive, I can drive to, six, seven countries within three, two or three hours. Wow. You know, it's like I, I can be in Austria, in Vienna, Austria in two hours, right? Yeah. I can be Bratislava an hour and 45 minutes. I can be in Prague in four and a half hours. You know, it's like, I can, you know, it's Munich, five, yeah. five and a half, six hours. You know, it's like yeah. if I jump on a plane, I can be anywhere. You yeah. know, 500 million people live within 500 kilometers of, uh, of a spot in the middle of Germany. Yeah. 500 million people. Why? Because there's so many countries here. And yeah. of course, the cultures are all different. And that's mm -hmm. what's beautiful. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. if I want to break from the Hungarian culture, which is rare, I go to Austria. I love the idyllic, you know, old uh, Austrian. It's, it's like, mm -hmm. it's like Bavaria almost. Right. But it's, mm -hmm. it's even more um, kitschy, I guess you could say. Yeah. And I, then I go to Austria. If I want sort of that Slavic sort of, you know, really sort of uh, icy edge, then I go to, yeah. you know, Prague or Slovenia or whatever. Yeah, and cool. it's amazing. So if we want to go to Paris for the weekend, we don't have to book in advance. I go to the airport and say, right. give me a flight to Paris. Boom. Off you go. 200 bucks round trip, yeah. book a hotel while, while you're at the airport on your, on your WhatsApp or whatever it is you book it in and then done, you know, That's amazing. Well, it's yeah. great about your current business too, right? I mean, yeah. uh, and even us, right. I, I'm sitting here and it's, I'm in Texas and it's 7 43 AM. We're on a zoom. Like we're next to each other. Yeah. And your new online business, it can be every country in the world. Right. And that's the, that's, that's, that's the fun behind it. Now you asked me how I do business in America. Well, it all started with the veterans. You know, that's, that's the one epiphany I had is like, I'm a veteran. I stepped away from the veteran space for 20 years because let's face it, a lot of veterans revel in the past, mm -hmm. you know, the glory days you, sure. because that purpose we had, that selflessness that we experienced when we, when we joined the military, mm -hmm. uh, you can't replicate it. It's just, I'm sorry. It's just impossible. Even as a Leo or a police officer, or firefighter, firefighter, right. I know, I know veterans that have done both and they're like, man, the, the military, you just can't replicate that feeling. So yeah. a lot of people never replicate it or never move forward. They stay there. So I knew I had to get out yeah. up here. Right. I mean, yeah. what I didn't tell you was in 1993, I got out, stayed in Germany, 1994, 1995, I had a nervous breakdown, woke up naked in the park in Berlin. Mm. You know, and it was like, I just lost it. You know what I mean? I was homeless in 2008. I lost everything after the economic crash. Yeah, and I was homeless, homeless in Berlin. Uh, after after the shock, I actually actually loved it, uh, you know, and because I knew I could get out of it, yeah. but I loved it because I didn't have to be there. But I, you know, it's one of those weird yeah. things. So you know, I've been up and down and and, and out and about, but in the end, uh, you know, everything that uh, I do in Europe led me to uh, have massive experience for American companies, right? right. That others don't have. And and look, I have an American company. They said, look, we're looking for. Um, 
you know, weapon accessories, special right. weapons accessories. I know a guy in Austria who does all of the weapons for the Austrian army and the London Metro Police. Guess who has a deal now with the Austrian weapon company and the American manufacturer? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. and, and I got equity, I got upfront fees and I got, you know, it's like, it's like, yeah. Bah, 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 yeah. you know, and, and, well, and, and, and yeah. Good. No, I'm saying, for, the, for those listening, I, you know, I believe every entrepreneur has a, a story of failure. All right. So here's, here's Coon, Captain Coon, okay, <laughs> Captain Coon, Captain Coon was fucking homeless, right? Like I've gone through personal bankruptcy. I mean, every successful entrepreneur yep. is riddled with failures. So if you're listening to this and thinking, you know, I just, I can't do it. I don't have enough money. I don't, I mean, fuck it. He was homeless. I, in a foreign country. Yeah. Right? In a foreign country. In a foreign country. My, my first time I crashed um, after the nervous breakdown, I had a girlfriend at the time who I did, who I then married. And in 2002, she decided to go out and have a fling and then had an accident, broke her back and you know, all, all kinds of stuff. I lost my job that very week, lost her that, that, that very week, lost all my money that very week. And then in mm. December of 2002, I'm sitting there going, what the hell am I going to do now? You know, I'm broke. So I wrote that. I wrote a book and it was called, uh, it's a German book. Um, and it's called Ser served in the Gulf from soldier to cynic. So that's so very cool. a book in German. And, uh, that, that's the only thing that saved me from going broke is because they put me on TV immediately. Cause it came out the day the war started in 2003 and in, in, oh. in February, March. So I spent a year sort of like floating on that until I figured out what I was going to do, you know, yeah. but th that's, that's also when I realized, dude, it came because it was supposed to come. This was supposed to happen yeah. right now, right? Yeah. Embrace everything that comes. I mean, if, if I'd have given up every time I got slapped in the face, I mean, I got slapped in the face with semi trucks, man. It wasn't right. like just a slap, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> are you, Coon, are you a religious guy? I am, of course. Spiritually religious, yes. Indeed. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, of Take course. I, you know, I believe in God, I believe in the universe, all that kind of stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The older, the older I get, the, the more important that's become to me. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, because we realize, you know, we are uh, the captains of our own destiny, but there's guidance out there. Yeah. Like, yeah. There's guidance out there telling us, you know, people, uh, some, some people call it purely intuition. I, I call, I use my intuition on a daily basis, but I also know it comes from other sources. Yeah. No, it has to. Yeah. Well, cool, man. I know we're getting to a wrap. It's been one, I do want to be, uh, you know, on your show or part of your course. Just let me know. I'd love to do that. Awesome. But for people listening, where is the best place when I want to plug the course again to make sure everybody knows how to get there? And you got to check it out. It's not another bullshit online course. Uh, nope. Tons of members, tons of feedback, videos, reviews, testimonials. I'm endorsing it. I'm, I've looked at it. Um, I haven't been through it yet, but just based on you know your credibility and what right. I've seen, it looks amazing. Thank so, you. Uh, what is the address for to right. sign up for that? Well, it's stephenclass.com. That's okay. the free training, which will lead you then into Got the it. Immediate Impact Revenue Program. If you want to check me out on my website, you can look at everything on there. It's stephen kuhn K -U -H -N com. Okay. And then what, what channel on social are you the most active on? Facebook, probably. My Facebook page, Stephen Kuhn Official. Okay, cool. Yeah. And you do uh, lives every week? Every day. Every day? Wow. Every day. Is Further, there, there since I started, since I started 16 months ago, every day, brother. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to, Jesus, that's committed. So I'll have to, I just started following you on that, so I'll have to watch it. Is, uh, is it a certain time or is it just once a day? It's typically between, uh, let's see what time is it? It's so between East Coast, between 10 and 12 noon. So 10 morning and 12 noon. Okay. Um, is my live. And then, then I do the daily purge, which is a morning video that I get, when I get up, I just go outside and just purge whatever I, whatever's on my mind. You do two and, videos twice a day. Yes. That is now I stopped amazing. just recently. I stopped weekends. Okay. So I stopped yeah. doing weekends because yeah. I saw the, the views were way down. Like, I don't worry about it. So everybody else is off. So I just, I don't do it on yeah. weekends now, but it hasn't affected any, any, anything at all. Actually it's increased. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, amazing. um, yeah, it's, uh, I'm on, I was on Instagram. I was on Instagram and they deleted my account because I, re I reported four people that used my pictures mm. and they left them up and, re and deleted me <laughs> and my 16,000 followers. So I'm following the wrong Instagram then? No, no, no. I only have one now. Okay. So, yeah. So I sent them my passport. And they're like, no, you're fake. I'm like, that's my passport. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> so I had to start over. Yeah. So crazy world there. Okay. So yeah, what one matter. piece of advice would you give that entrepreneur right now that is, you know, on a tipping point of either failing or succeeding? Collaborations. 
the quickest, fastest, most powerful growth method that I know of mm. is a collaboration with somebody that you have either a complementing product or you can both profit from, from, from working together. That's yeah. almost, almost literally almost all I do anymore. Yeah. Like, I, like literally. I crazy. love that, man. Every business that I've been successful in, I've had a, uh, a uh, partner, yep. you know, and yep. uh, I can tell you're super excited about your current business partner. And oh, that, yeah. That's Huge. awesome, man. Huge. So. Well, look, I mean, are we, you have people like you coming in. Are gonna be teach. I mean, it's, it's incredible. The value you can add for someone, and, and the cost is ridiculous. Uh, but what I wanted to do is reach those people who can't afford a private consulting group, a, a private right. consultant. You know, like yeah. someone who couldn't afford you, they can join the group and see you. You know, like yeah. that, that kind of thing. And it's yeah. because they're later going to be the ones. And, and I've proven it. Because like I said, 16 months now I've been doing these lives. People who've been listening to my lives, I've helped them for free. And now they're to the point where they can afford a private consultant. They book me. Yeah, that's awesome. So people who talk to me a year and a half ago, like, Jesus, I can't afford that. And now, now they're like, can I book you for five months? Yeah, it's awesome. You know, because cause I've helped them through. Now right. that's the long game. And that's, that's not a typical American game, the long game. You know? Right. American. That's, now, that's, now, 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 now. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I, I did a live on that on on that yesterday about exactly that quick money, you know, yeah. quick money. People want quick money all the time. Like, well, it doesn't exist. Take, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it doesn't exist. If you it know does, what? It hasn't ever existed for me. So, I don't know. <laughs> well, it, it disappears then immediately yeah. because what it's you, quick. what you get quick goes quick. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. and that's why I preach equity. So if like, for instance, these online marketing firms that are everywhere, me, I would, I would take, I would, I would ask half price. Yeah. Yeah. And then equity yeah. for every company that works with me. Look, you, you don't want to pay the extra good to pay me half price and give me 3% equity. Yeah. You know, that's the kind of stuff that I always say, man, that, that's, that's the kind of collaboration that I love right there. Yeah. You know, cool. I don't have to form a third company right. to pay taxes and form a new fund. Nah, nah, nah. You do your thing. I do my thing. We work together. We share the profits. Boom. Yeah. Love it. Well, yeah. let's, let's collaborate, man. This has been amazing. I appreciate awesome, it. Um, and uh, let, hit me up on, you know, the, the show or the, the course or whatever. Right. Awesome. Okay. So, so cool. we got the Vetpreneur tribe. I want to bring you in on that. And we got to the Peru. course and Peru, Vetpreneur, Peru, the course, and then the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother. Hey, it's awesome. been amazing. I appreciate it. Where are you in Texas again? Uh, Dallas, Fort Worth area, a cool okay. city called Colleyville. Okay. I might be in, uh, again this year in, um, Austin, no, no San Antonio for the, um, the American, what is it? The Freedom Fest. It's a okay, cool. beverage competition, a, be a veteran beverage competition. I was there last year as a judge. Had to, had to test it's like six, 600 beers, wines, and spirits. I, I, I want to be in on that too. <laughs> <laughs> it was a tough job, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, Judge. I appreciate okay. it, man. Thank you Thanks, so much. Buddy.